For the first time since 2016, Monster Jam rolls into the land of the rising sun. The MetLife Dome in Tokyo, Japan is this weekend's home for exciting Monster Jam action as eight superstars compete to be crowned the overall event champion. It's a Steel Titans takeover of epic proportions as Japan is ready for action. This is Tokyo, Japan, and this is Monster Jam. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to Monster Jam. I'm Scott Jordan alongside El Toro Loco Ice driver Scott Buto and our pit reporter Leslie Mears. And this weekend is an incredible event for Monster Jam fans around the world as we are back in Japan for the first time since 2016. Of course, Scott, back then it was Osaka. This weekend, it's the MetLife Dome in Tokyo, Japan. Talk about the atmosphere tonight in Tokyo. You know, Scott, it's absolutely electrifying. You know, three years ago it was electric. It's gonna be even more electric now to here today in Tokyo. I'm excited, but mostly I'm excited about is Mark McDonald back in the saddle of El Toro Loco. No bias there for your El Toro Loco teammate. A big night for Tokyo native Taka Higashino. He is a former X Games FMX gold medalist, and he makes his debut tonight in Monster Jam behind the wheel of Monster Energy. What kind of pressure is Taka feeling in front of his hometown crowd? Anytime you're in front of your hometown crowd and family, there's a little added pressure. If the track conditions are not that favorable right here tonight, but we're going to see what he has to offer here. Let's get you down to the track. Welcome to Tokyo, Japan. We start with round one of America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Racing. There's the bracket. Eight superstar driver athletes, eight 12,000 pound Monster Jam Steel Titans. One will become the racing winner and kick off an amazing weekend here in Tokyo, Japan. In our first matchup, Morgan Kane and Gravedigger against your El Toro Loco teammate, Mark McDonald. How great to see Mark McDonald back in the seat of El Toro Loco. Uh, but one thing you got to keep in mind, Scott, and take a look at is look at the track conditions. It's not really good out there. It's wet. You don't know if the trucks are going to slide or if they're going to stick in the corners. Mark McDonald making his first stadium appearance of 2019, but it's Grave Tigger with the acceleration as he continues getting around this tough track. Morgan Kane, the 2016 World Finals Racing Champion, has never met a track he cannot dominate, and he wins. Moving on to round two, it's Morgan Kane and Grave Digger. And take a look at Haley Gawley. She's uh, one of these new Monster Jam athletes coming up. I was with her about three years ago at Paxton when she was learning at the Monster Jam uh, University with Tom Men. So she's one of these athletes. Keep an eye on. She's going to be one of these rising stars. Alex Blackwell and Megalodon, her opponent, a tough draw. He is so experienced on these international shows. And there is Megalodon getting over the race ramp. The little jammer on the racetrack. Haley Gawley and Wonder Woman trying to play catch up around this tough, muddy track. But Megalodon with the win. So Alex Blackwell moving on to round two. Alex is a true veteran of the sport. You know, he knows how to handle these track conditions. So watch for these proven veterans to dominate this track. Neil Elliott, Max D, Lindsey Reed, and Scooby-Doo. There's the Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Champion. The reigning one, she won back in May in Orlando. And to get there, she won the showdown. So not only can she win in freestyle, but she can beat you in the race. And she has to slow down to hit that turn. And Neil Elliott now off to a big lead. Neil Elliott, I call him the master mutter. He knows how to drive in this type of a situation. I'll put all my money on uh, when it comes to winning races on Neil Elliott. Our next round one matchup, Bari Musawa bringing Zombie Nation to Tokyo, and he lines up against the debuting Taka Higashino, the Tokyo native, 34 years old, a former FMX gold medalist at the X Games, now in Monster Energy, lined up against Bari, a tough draw in round one for the debuting Taka. Not just that, but talking about getting thrown the wolves here, he has to fight these new track elements, you know, it's the first time he's ever in front of a, a crowd here, and let alone his home crowd. Now, this has to be the muddiest indoor track I have ever seen here at the MetLife Dome, and the arm falling off, but Zombie is gonna take the win, and Bari Musauer making nice work of the first timer moving on to America's best contacts and eyeglasses racing semifinals Alex Blackwell in Megalodon Morgan Kane in Gravedigger 
two international heavyweights. Morgan, of course, competes stateside as well. But Alex can beat you on any given night. He has traveled the world. Nine world finals appearances as he looks to make work of Grave Digger. But Morgan is in the lead, giving him everything he's got. Without a doubt, you know, you have two proven veterans right here. The key to this track here is try not to lift so much and try to be consistent around the corners. And Morgan Kane doing just that. He moves on to the final round. Neil Elliott and Max D in the semifinals up against Bari Musauer in Zombie as this track continues to get muddied up and the dirt continues to get thicker as the traction will now start to come into play for these BKT tires. Yeah, watch how these uh, these athletes are taking these corners. It's it's who can get around that corner, who can drift the, the cleanest and tightest into the corner into the final hit. Very tight race so far as the combatants enter the final turn. Barry Musauer in Zombie trying to get the win over Neil Elliott and Max D, and that's exactly what he does. And that is the first loss for Neil Elliott in Japan. He won racing in 2016 in Osaka. It's very rare to see Neil Elliott lose a race, especially in these type of tracks. Our final round matchup is Morgan Kane and Gravedigger, the 2016 World Finals Racing Champion against Barry Musauer in Zombie. Barry, of course, made it all the way to the final round of World Finals Racing in Orlando, and they are off. Gravedigger off to a great start. Zombie playing a little catch up, but he might have him in this turn. Morgan taking it a little wide as the mud thickens, and Zombie has him so far. You know, that's what Barry does. You know, every time he's out there, he gets better and better. He's always winning races. He's always winning competitions. And Zombie with the win. Man, the difference was in the turns. We saw Grave Digger going wide. Zombie able to stay tight. And that is going to do it for America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Racing. It is Bari Musauer in Zombie getting the win. Now, for those who are not familiar with the international shows, the points a little different. The bottom four get two, third and fourth get four, eight and six go to one and two. Let's hear from Bari Musauer and Zombie. Bari, you were so fast out there tonight and you know, this isn't a track that you're typically used to and so how were you able to master those corners when the dirt was pushing out so hard on the edges? Honestly, you know, I took some note from my buddy Morgan Kane over there. After the first round, I got my truck turned around after I won and I got to see how he was taking a turn, and he plastered my truck with mud. So I said, okay, I got this. So we just had to stick to our lines. My buddy Yoho back here has got the truck tuned perfectly. And we're making history for Zami. You guys have a good time? Well, there's still you know, several competitions coming up tonight if you want to take the overall championship. So next is going to be our two-wheel skills challenge. And so what can we expect from this zombie truck? You know what, we're gonna try our best, give 110% like we always do. This track, we'll see this dirt is not what we're used to. So we're gonna have to pull something out of our bag of tricks and hopefully it pays off. Barry Musauer in Zombie making a lot of fans out here. He competed in Osaka back in 2016, but now Zombie Nation belongs to Tokyo. More on the way from Tokyo, Japan next. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. Welcome back to the MetLife Dome in Tokyo, Japan. Monster Jam in town for two historic events. We got freestyle coming up, the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge recap as well. But this is the science of Monster Jam fueled by Monster Energy. So the process for bringing the dirt into the MetLife Dome this weekend for our Monster Jam was a little bit different than usual. So there's a lot of really intense local traffic here around the MetLife Dome. So in order to avoid any problems with the dump trucks getting in and out, they actually started pre-staging the dirt on site about a week and a half before the event started. Then on Tuesday, prior to the event. They brought in about 3,000 cubic yards of dirt. It took the guys about 18 hours to do that, and that seems a little long. You're right. It's about six hours longer than the normal process would take, and that's because of the typhoons that have hit the local areas. So the dirt is really, really wet. So when they're unloading it, it's a little bit more cumbersome and hard to deal with. In addition to that, they mixed in some sand and some Portland cement mix to try to make the dirt a little bit more manageable and to harden up a little bit for today's show. Now we get a look at Haley Golly in Wonder Woman. She made her debut in 2018 in Scooby-Doo, now competing in Wonder Woman on these international shows. You mentioned you, know, you trained with her at PAX, and talk about her development as a driver. 
Yeah, when she came out there, man, she was just all out. She was hitting everything big, so Tom had, had to kind of set her down and say, hey, look, it's not all about going big or going home every single time. It's about consistency. It's about throttle rhythm. It's getting from point A to point B and having that good, clean run and freestyle. And I, I think Haley's going to be there. I, I think she's going to develop into a great Monster Jam athlete. Making just her fourth appearance in 2019. We talked about this dirt and this mud here inside the MetLife Dome, what it does for racing, but talk about what it does in a freestyle track like this. It's all about momentum. You cannot stop to start. You, you, you got to keep the throttle down a little bit and ease up on it, but it's all about the momentum of it, Scott, and keep that throttle rhythm going. And even if you go sideways into a ramp, hit it anyways, because in these type of uh, track environments, your truck's not going to flip over most of the time, so you're okay to go sideways into a ramp. You mentioned you like going first in freestyle to set the tone. That is what Haley Golly is doing right now in Wonder Woman. So this is what the fans will base the rest of the night off. So very important for her to get off to a good start. She seems to be hitting some of the ramps, getting the jumps up on the pod. That's all you have to do. Fill the clock. Get the entire two minutes ticked away. Keep jumping over everything. Don't roll over, and you'll have yourself a successful, if not unspectacular, freestyle run. Yeah, in these type of uh, tracks where it's really muddy out there, it's it's all about noise, making noise with the throttle, getting after things and hitting everything in front of you. Don't stop, don't back up, but keep the truck moving. Like right there, the truck sells itself. It, it acts like a shock absorber when you hit the ground like that. This Wonder Woman Monster Jam truck came out when the movie premiered just a few years ago, and now we've kept it overseas in some of these huge international shows. It's always great as a comic book fan, a DC comic fan, seeing Wonder Woman out on the track. I don't think there is anyone more perfectly suited to be behind the wheel than Haley Gully. Yeah, she conditions herself. She's a great athlete. She's a fitness model. I just wish she wouldn't have backed up there. I wish she would have just attacked that ramp and went after it. You lose all your momentum that way as she hits the FMX ramp. She lands it though, so she's still going here. That's what we talked about. A lot of this battle is getting that two minute clock. You know, uh, Japanese fans are a little different than stateside. They're a little more quiet until the end of the run. That is when they show their respect. But in Monster Jam, a different ball game, and the fans are reacting, as you see right there. So the fans in Tokyo impressed by Wonder Woman and a nice score for her to kick it off, 7.711. Yeah, it's a great score, Scott. It's, it's a great way to start freestyle. She had big air, she had good momentum, she had a clean run, only backed up one time, so she's evolving into this Monster Jam athlete that we all know she's gonna be. Alex Blackwell out of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, made his debut all the way back in 2005. In 2017, he won the Arena Freestyle of the Year, so he is excelling in this competition now, mainly driving in these international shows. And let's talk about that for a minute. So next year, World Finals 21 in Orlando, we will extend an invitation for the first time ever to an international-born superstar competing exclusively internationally. So Blackwell would not qualify, but somebody like Taka Higashinu, who will compete later on in freestyle, would be eligible. So essentially, Scott, the road to World Finals 21 overseas has started already. And I think that should be, because we call it the World Finals, so let's open the doors up for that. So I think it's great. Another thing that Monster Jam is doing, they're changing every single year. And that's what keeps competition out. And Monster Jam is the cream of the crop, so why not open it up to the world? Alex Blackwell in Megalodon, one of the most popular trucks in Monster Jam. You talk about that traction and keeping the momentum. It's slowing down just a little bit as we see the mud continuing to pile up, but he's just gonna take this little jammer and try to get a sky wheelie out of it. Not much there for Alex Blackwell. I don't think he could have gotten much there. Didn't have a lot of speed going up. Well, you know, and one thing also you get to point out here with, the, with this track conditions like this, it, it, it takes a, a toll on the trucks itself too. It puts a lot of weight wear and tear and stress on it because it's heavy. It gets all up in there. There he goes, getting a little more momentum off the ramp. So Alex Blackwell, this is sort of a, a circle freestyle track. So you go down one side, you have to turn around and come back the other. Not a lot of obstacles to choose from other than that pattern. It's The key is getting from point A to point B quickly. And make sure you don't just turn left. You see a lot of people, when they start off new in the game, they, they turn left. So the key is to come off a stack, turn right, come off a stack, turn left, and mix it up. That way you're hitting every point rather than going around in a circle. And we see some higher ramps here, 
but this track, this freestyle setup reminds me more of an arena setup just because it, it's not quite as spread out. There's not a whole lot to choose from, so you do have to pick and choose carefully as we see Alex Blackwell getting all the way out there trying to make something happen, trying to get a little more air, but again, the traction on the tires, the mud just thickening up. You can't seem to find the lane. And then you get lost because when you're out there, you can't see the faces because everything is wet. So when you start going over these things, you don't know what, what side of the track you're on. When you're hitting something, you don't know if you're on that face or that face. So a lot of times you get kind of a little lost out there. So that's what's key about this thing is to make sure you hit the thing from every single angle. In 2019, Alex Blackwell has also been behind the wheel of Pirate's Curse, but the fans in Tokyo love Megalodon. They love the Shark, and Blackwell scores 6.491. Not enough to take the lead from Haley Gully in Wonder Woman. It is now time for Inside Monster Jam. Here we are in Tokyo, Japan for the very first time. I'm Tal the Duke. Haka Higashino. We're here checking out the city. We had a day off and we thought, let's go check out the city. So he knows it well. I cannot read anything. So I'm having a ton of fun. I'm trusting him. I'm going to try to uh, coach him. Hopefully he trusts me. Yeah, I trust you. Yeah? Yeah. So, so you trust me, then I'll be tour guide. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I want him to be my tour guide. Yeah. He's doing a great job. So enjoy the trip and uh, we'll see what this day has entailed. Hello! I'm very excited. What an amazing day. We ended up exploring Tokyo. We had chicken, we had sushi, but now we gotta go back to work. We're back here at the stadium. We're gonna jump in the truck, we're gonna do some practice, but do you have anything else planned after that? Yeah, I have something special dinner for you tonight. And don't be fooled, Scott, I'm gonna let the world in on a little secret. Tyler Duke's first stop in Tokyo was at McDonald's. But up next, we got the debut of Taka in Monster Energy. Welcome back to Tokyo, Japan. Scott Jordan, Scott Buto, Leslie Mears on the call. For a deeper look at Taka Higashino, it's America's best contacts and eyeglasses look in. Who's ready for America's best contacts and eyeglasses look in? So we're excited for the premiere this weekend of Taka Higashino here with the Monster Energy Monster Truck. And so you've always been uh, a Monster Energy athlete or for quite some time now. So how did you get started your FMX journey with them? Yeah, I've been like I'm doing motocross since I was eight with my dad. Then when I turned 17 years old, they have a freestyle ramp. Then I just try, jump it. Then I love it, you know. So I asked my dad, hey, can I switch sports? You know, I don't want to race no more. Then I want to do freestyle. Then he said, hey, do whatever you want. So I just start. I love it. So every day, like I keep pushing, pushing. Then I can tell my progressing by trick. So make me more like a motivation keep doing so I have a dream for X game but I never saw I'm gonna made it you know I just keep pushing the it's dream come true so it's feeling awesome and appreciate it well and it's really cool too because it seems like you just keep pushing the limits and so how do you kind of make that crossover from freestyle motocross then to monster jam yeah this is a surprise you know <laughs> very surprise for me like I, I never saw I'm gonna drive in this big truck you know so yeah so I have a yeah friend, you know, like a Jamie. So he asked me for you wanna try like a school, Monster Jam University. So I went to Pakistan then with Tom, and like a, he is seven time world champion. So he's driver. So he teaching me a lot of techniques. So I hope today is better, you know. <laughs> so what was it like the very first time? that you drove, I mean, because you're so used to being on two wheels. I mean, flying through the air, it's about the same thing there. You use some of the same skills, but what was it like to man that 12,000 pound Monster Jam truck for the first time? It's totally different, you know, different than car, different than that bike, you know, it's a monster, you know. So I have no idea how do I control beginning. So I don't know, you know, anything, you know. 
so I just a little bit get used to now, so I want to progress in more little by little, you know, step by step. So one day I want to do good this one. So. And you get to make your debut this weekend here at the MetLife Dome. And I know you've got family in attendance. And so, you know, you're used to pressure of, you know, a high energy, high performance, high stakes environments. And so what is that energy like here today with your family and your premiere in the Monster Energy Monster Truck? Yeah, especially like a home country, you know, like a crowd of, you know, even, I don't know, I got motivation and I'm sure I do better, better than practice, you know, because always get me energy like the same when I ride a freestyle motocross. If a home country, like an extra, you know, I get extra skills. So. And what's it like to have a guy like Todd LeDuc on your team too? You know, he's here with you this weekend. Yes. You know, he's a multi-time world champ as well to give you advice and kind of help you and give you pointers. Yeah, this is uh, awesome. You know, like uh, he make me comfortable. You know, I was too nervous yesterday too. You know, his advice and all the crew, everybody like advised me radio. Then yesterday was pretty surprised myself. Like uh, I getting better. So yesterday was feeling so good. I enjoyed it. So hopefully today too. You know, so kind of nervous, but crowd gonna help me for sure. This is the moment he's been waiting for. Taka Higashino, our first look, his freestyle debut in Monster Energy. We saw him at, at Monster Jam University, powered by UNOH. Originally from Osaka, Japan, made a name for himself, made his mark right here in Tokyo. It's going to be exciting to watch here in his development of how he's going to become a Monster Jam athlete. Uh, it's one thing to drive one of these trucks and to be at Monster Jam University, but be in front of his hometown crowd and then be thrown at this type of a track condition. You see right there, he's backing up. So he never had to uh, drive on these type of track conditions. In 2012, in X Games 28, he became the first Japanese medalist in X Games history when he won gold in Moto X. So now he is making that transition from two wheel to four wheel. Now Scott is an announcer, I've made that transition. I've gone from four wheels to two wheels, back to four wheels. It's easy with the microphone, but what has he got to deal with now that he's got all this horsepower and a nice jump there for Taka in Monster Energy. That's exactly what he's got to do. He's got to get comfortable. He's got to get in the right mindset and just have fun out there. It's all about seat time and he'll get there. I mean, he's doing great right now. He started off a little rough, but he's got to learn how to drive in all these type of track conditions, and he's going to be just fine. And you talk about the coaching from two-time Monster Jam World Finals champion Todd LaDuke, a teammate in Monster Energy. We'll see if that's going to pay off for Taka. Also, we'll see if the hometown judging might go in his favor at judgeszone.com. But right now, I am impressed from what I am seeing from Taka Higashino in Monster Energy. I like the run. He's making good use of the clock, nice use of the entire track, and he's just kind of feeling it out. As you mentioned seat time will come excellence will come but i think he's doing great he's accelerating at the right time and he's getting some air off the ramps yeah he's finding himself you can see how he's evolving just on the short run he started off like i said a little rough hit a back up here and there but now he's he's having fun once you start getting in the truck and you start loosening up you start to have a little fun out there and what i like about what he's doing here is, is he's not getting the speed but he is still hitting the throttle at the right moment to get the air so we've been seeing some of the drivers tonight not getting air off the smaller ramps off the jammers he is doing it and another good jump for Taka and, and the thing another thing I like is he's sticking the landings here he's not getting wobbly he's not landing sideways he's not cross threading he played it safe so a solid run from Taka and Monterey great way to start off your career Taka Higashino letting the Tokyo crowd give him all the adoration that he deserved here a special moment family and friends are here his mentor in monster jam and look at that your new leader in freestyle taka higashino in monster energy yeah a little favoritism probably there but that's okay you know he started off slow and he ended the big so you can't ask for anything more about a taka now what a debut not many drivers can debut in the number one position he did just that and here's the guy you've been excited to see, Mark McDonald in El Toro Loco. Yeah, Mark's one of those drivers who's just so consistent, and he, he knows how to entertain the crowd. He comes out there, blows the smoke in El Toro, and watch what Mark does. He has constant throttle rhythm. He's consistent. He'll hit everything in front of him. He'll have nice transitions. He'll get from point A to point B very quickly. 
He's another driver that has transitioned very well into being an international competitor. He made 13 World Finals appearances competing stateside, now competing internationally in his first stadium event of 2019. And one thing a lot of people may not know about Mark McDonald is he, he is a real life cowboy out of Oklahoma. He is a cattleman, that's what he does in his free time. He has a big ranch with a lot of cattle and that's just what he does during the day. He herds cattle and then he comes overseas and runs El Toro local go into the ground. Yeah, and he has an awesome family, too. He, he's such a, a, an awesome person to be around. He's uplifting, you know, and, he, and he's a joker, too. One thing, if you know about Mark McDonald, when you're in a locker with him, make sure you put your gear away. And one of the best senses of humor in Monster Jam, a very dry sense of humor and a prankster for him. And another thing about Mark McDonald that is just so great under pressure, he doesn't feel it. Every time I've interviewed him at big events, whether he's trying to get the lead or he has the lead, he just does not feel pressure. He's just out there having a great time, and that's what he's doing now in El Toro Loco in Tokyo. Yeah, Mark is always smiling. Like you said, he, he's awesome to be around. He just he has that uplifting personality where you, it's, it's, it's inviting. You want to be around him all the time. And he's putting on a great run right now. He's consistent. His throttle rhythm is great. He's, like I said, transitioning from point A to point B very quickly. So he's having a great run right now. And he finished second in racing at World Finals 14. He is also a freestyle master. He can win freestyle. He's won many in his career. A nice jump for El Toro Loco. As you see the smoke coming out of the back end, as well as the nose of the crazy bull. So here he goes off the side, maybe looking for a bicycle off that big ramp. Instead gets a little bit of air, not a whole lot, but he's got some serious smoke coming out of El Toro Loco. You know, we talked about it earlier. You know, you don't have to be so squared up to these ramps, especially in this track with track condition because your truck probably won't flip over. And I say that, I say that lightly because these track conditions like this, you can hit these ramps sideways and know that the mud, the, the track itself is going to act and kind of as a shock absorber and make your truck kind of like go back to the position again. And, and the further you are back in the freestyle lineup, the more muddy it becomes, the more these lanes start to kind of give way a little bit. And that will do it for Mark McDonald and El Toro Loco 7.562, currently third overall. And you're shaking your head right next to me, Scott. Yeah, you know, look, it, I think that was the cleanest run of the night. They didn't back up. It didn't do anything that you didn't want them to do. So fans were all about the pit party earlier. But up next, it's the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Recap from Tokyo. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips. Great Clips. It's going to be great. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Spin Master Toys. Real trucks, real action, Monster Jam. The MetLife Dome, the home of the Sabu Lions of the Pacific League. Scott, have you ever been to a Sabu Lions game? No, I have not. Well, we're going to get to one soon. Here we go back to the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge earlier today. Take a look at Morgan Kane and Grave Digger, fifth place overall. Now, if there's any competition where the track might affect it the most, I think it's this one. Scott. This type of track conditions is like elephants on ice. That's what it is right now. It's very hard. You don't know if the truck's going to slip. You don't know if it's going to stick. It's very hard to do anything. So Taka tried for the big air. He got it. A little sky wheeling. Maybe that's all you have to do. It works for him as he got fourth place. He would try it again. Unsuccessful on the second attempt. Alex Blackwell in Megalodon. Just gets a wheelie. That's it. A nice wheelie, and that's going to get him in third place. That's what you need right there. True veteran showing what you can do with the track conditions. Alex knows how to do that. You have to adapt and adjust to the uh, conditions around you, and Alex Blackwell and Megalodon gets into the top three with the 7.968. Our top two will start it off with Lindsay Reed and Scooby-Doo, a sky wheelie. She's going to end up in second place, and then she tried a reverse popper, but look at that. She was able to stick the back two tires and get a nice wheelie. She just stuck there. The fans love it. 7.980, second place for Scooby-Doo. Yeah, and you got Neil Elliott here. Look what he's doing right here. You know, he's trying to do the popper. He didn't get it right there, but to go look at it, his second attempt right now, he gets it. Neil Elliott and Max D, one of the best in this competition. Let's hear from the winner for the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. So, Neil, you take the win tonight, no surprise, but it looked like you had to be a lot more aggressive out there, and it took a lot more throttle control. It is. You had to be really aggressive. You know, the ground, it's really, really weird, like we talked about earlier. It's really tacky when I went to go do the, the nose wheelie, and it bit, and it actually pulled a wheelie, but then when you go to stop, it wants to slide. So it's, it's really tough to read the dirt, and we talked about it early, but I guess I come out here and got a win. 
Yeah, it was pretty impressive to see you stick that because that was a move that nobody else was able to accomplish out here today, and you were able to do that. Well, I thank you, you know, and I, I had to try hard for it, like you said. You know, the, the dirt is really, really mushy, and a couple of the other Monster Jam drivers done sky wheelies off the back of the race lane, so it knocked that real sharp edge off that I needed, but I still managed to pull out one pretty decent one. With any luck, you know, we can come out here and maybe throw one down in freestyle and get a little bit better. Now we get a look at our racing winner, Barry Moosauer in Zombie, trying to double down here in Monster Jam Freestyle. Zombie Nation in full effect as he gets the crowd into it before he starts this freestyle run. So Barry Moosauer out of Orlando, Florida, been around for a long time. Triple Threat Series, arena shows, stadium shows, you name it, Barry has done it and can do it internationally as well. Yeah, I believe this is his 10th season now with Monster Jam and Barry, uh, one of these drivers who every year keeps getting better and better. And I love what, how he did, what he created with this whole zombie nation with the arms, goes around the crowds and get them all into it. And his story is one we talk about a lot on this program. You know, he went to a first Monster Jam show in Detroit when he was six years old. He came up through RC trucks, which he still does a whole lot of. So if you ever get to Monster Jam World Finals, the RC World Finals is a great part of the pit party, and you can find Barry out there quite a bit. But he took a liking to Scott Hartsock, the driver of Slinger, who also took a liking to Barry and just ended up coming up through the ranks, got a seat, and now is the leader of Zombie Nation. So one of a, a great Great story in Monster Jam and one that I like to tell because it's very inspiring from a super fan perspective into a superstar. Absolutely. If you look at all these athletes today, everybody has a different story, a different background. You don't have to necessarily have that motorsports background. It, does it help? Yes. But look at Bari. He's taken his background in RC and making himself one of the best Monster Jam drivers out there. And he is also Shaquille O'Neal's favorite Monster Jam driver. Those two good friends in Orlando. Barry actually doesn't live too far from me, not just north of Orlando, so great to have that sort of hometown presence here in Tokyo with me as well. From Florida to Japan, we're rocking it from the Sunshine State to the land of the rising sun, and Barry Musauer in Zombie trying to make this night his. He's a guy that loves to compete on these international shows, a big family man, so definitely does not like to leave his family, but when he is out here on the road, overseas, competing in foreign countries, he lets them have everything, oh. and a nice backflip of Tammy almost landed he it. He did, Scott. You know, if he would have just maybe would have done it a little harder and a little faster, more momentum, I think he would have got that truck around. He just ended up going straight up in the air, didn't get enough underneath, but that does not matter. He is the new leader, 9.09. .09 to Bari Musauer getting it done again. And there you see the backflip attempt just goes a little too straight up, didn't get the turn on the back end. Let's take a look at the BKT freestyle top five. It is Bari Musauer in Zombie with the lead. Taka in Monster Energy 7.928 and Haley Gully in Wonder Woman 7.711. That's your top three, but we have more Monster Jam freestyle coming up from Tokyo, Japan. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Monster Jam. Your Monster Day becomes such a huge worldwide phenomenon with shows on the calendar from Saudi Arabia to Wales to Sydney, Australia, now in Tokyo, Japan. Scott Jordan here joined by Scott Buto, driver of El Toro Loco Ice. And I gotta say, the action so far tonight in the MetLife Dome has been amazing. It has been amazing. It's been electrifying. And I'm excited to watch Lindsay Reed right here. This is the world champion freestyler right here. There's only one athlete in Monster Jam who can say she is the reigning World Finals freestyle champion. And it is Lindsay Reed. She likes to get started right away with that jump. She starts it off smooth, and that, that's one of her go-to moves when I see her do a freestyle run. She just gets off right in the middle of the ramp, lets it kind of air out a little bit, and starts feeling the track. And one cool thing about Lindsay Reed and Haley Golly both being here is that they kind of flip-flop a little bit. So Lindsay Reed took a year off when she had the, the birth of her daughter, came back and debuted in Wonder Woman, and now she's in Scooby-Doo, which is where Haley Golly debuted, and now she's in Wonder Woman. So a little flip-flop from our female superstar stars but Lindsay Reed phenomenal when it comes to freestyle absolutely and she gets better and better each time I watch her and then the one thing I will say about her she's consistent she does everything that you want her to do in that truck so I, I'm really excited about her I love what she's doing I think she puts on a great show and she's like you said a great family person she's great with the fans she's everything you want in a monster jam athlete 
And she went early in Monster Jam Freestyle back in Orlando in World Finals, one of the first three to go. So she was able to kind of sit back and watch everybody else. So there's some pressure there for her to do that. Now she's going later in the lineup. She knows what she has to do and can sort of tailor make her run around what Barry Musauer did, what Taka did in Monster Energy. And now she's going to start doing that. So as she starts to square up early on in her run, you notice she starts kind of cross-threading a little bit as she gets to the bigger ramps. Yeah, and she looks like she's having a lot of fun out there, Scott. That's what I love about watching her. She's she's having fun. She's evolving to this great athlete now. She's the world champion. She's put on a great run for these Tokyo fans. And there was some controversy in Orlando with you know some fans on social media kind of saying that maybe she didn't deserve to win. We like this run better. We like that run better. I was there. You were there. The right person won Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle. She has the trophy. End of story. Let her have her year. We'll come back in Orlando next year for World Finals 21. She can defend it. Somebody else can try to take it from her. But that's not the story right now. The story is Tokyo, Japan, as she tries to give Bari Musauer and Zombie a run for his money. And she's doing just that. She's doing everything she's supposed to be doing out there. What an awesome run. Nicely done for Scooby-Doo as she tries to get it refired. Will not restart. And that is the end of her run. She gets second place. 8.502 for Lindsay Reed and Scooby-Doo. Your leader remains Bari Musauer in Zombie. So we see two veteran international drivers coming out here strong in Tokyo. Now having the top two spots. And now we move on to Morgan Kane in Grave Digger, the 2016 World Finals Racing Champion. A good friend of the show. Grave Digger, of course, very popular worldwide. The black and green wrecking machine transcends countries and continents alike. And there's a big jump for Grave Digger to start it off. That's how you start off freestyle. Morgan Kane is a perfect face for Grave Digger and Matcha Jam. He's a, he's a great fan of He has a daughter now. So I, I love what Morgan Kane represents and what he brings to Matcha Jam. His daughter, Everly, now a huge part of his life. You can follow him on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And half his pictures are of his daughter and rightly so a big family man. And he is just good at everything he does. He is a former soccer star at Campbell University. He was all conference twice. He is an incredible driver, a former world champion, and now a great announcer uh, as well. So I, I'm blessed to be surrounded by incredible talent like, like yourself, Scott, Bryce Kenny, and Morgan Kane, who's also getting it done right now on the track. Yeah, you can see how the mud is starting to put a little stress on his truck right here. You know, he looks like he's got he, he's kind of struggling out there because I think that everything's weighing it down right now. Out of Curatuck, North Carolina, a hotbed of Monster Jam history right there in Curatuck. He grew up at Digger's Dungeon with the Anderson family. Cole Bernard, another one who has been in and out of Digger's Dungeon most of his life. Ryan Anderson, Adam Anderson, Kristen Anderson, all great friends. But right now, it's not about who you're friends with. It's about who you can beat on the track as we start seeing some smoke coming out of Grave Digger. And we noticed that with Mark McDonald, El Toro Loco. But this looks like some motor issues for Grave Digger. Yeah, I think it's the stress of, of what's happening out there with the mud. A disappointing end to the freestyle run of Morgan Kane's Grave Digger, sixth place overall, currently 6.658, a huge competitor, so probably not exactly what he envisioned here in Tokyo. Right now, let's go to the original Super Glue Corporation Pit Report. So the freestyle run for Morgan Kane cut very, very short tonight, and it just sounded like maybe you were shut off, but that's not the case here. What was going on inside the cab? Well, the truck definitely shut off, but it wasn't anything with the track officials or anything like that. It was uh, just pure stress. I mean, the, the dirt and everything that's been going on over here overseas, it's just really tough. I mean, this, this simulates about as close as you get to driving on a beach. And uh, once you have that much load on the truck, and it's just, it's just hard. And the way I drive, it's wide open. So, I mean, I'm turning 7,000 RPMs in that motor for a minute and 30 seconds, and it's wide open screaming. And, and it's tough. You know, it's, it's extremely tough on the mechanics. It's extremely tough on the truck. And unfortunately, the motor didn't hold together, and we're pretty sure that it's toast, and we'll, we'll replace it overnight and get ready for the show tomorrow. Yeah, that's a big deal, you know. The guys are used to doing that kind of stuff, and I know you have faith in Parker, but it just makes for a really rough night for them. Definitely, definitely, especially when you're overseas. I mean, you're, you're 14 hours ahead of, of the time zone that you're normally on, and everybody's always tired when we come over here. But, I mean, that's what Monster Jam is all about. We bust our butts, and we make sure that the fans are going to get exactly what they paid for, and that's a great event. The disappointed Morgan Kane, your BKT Freestyle Top 5 Zombie remains our leader, 9.092. Scooby-Doo Monster Energy, Wonder Woman, El Toro Loco rounding out the top five. We are not 
done yet. More Monster Jam Freestyle is coming up, but what an event we've had so far. The crowd has been electric here in Tokyo. Max D is up next. Monster Jam Freestyle continues in Tokyo. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. We are back at the MetLife Dome in Tokyo, Japan. Scott Jordan, Scott Buto, Leslie Mears calling all the Monster Jam action. The first time we are in Tokyo, Japan. We were last in Japan in 2016 in Osaka. And so far tonight, Scott, it's been the Bari Musauer show in zombie winning racing and now holding the lead in Monster Jam freestyle. You know, it really has been all about Bari here today, but we have one more competitor coming up. We got Neil Elliott in Maximum Destruction. I'm excited. He knows how to drive on this type of track. He's the master of mud. He has been around for a very, very long time. Made his Monster Jam debut in 2001 and was the 2002 Monster Jam Rookie of the Year. Originally out of Paxton, Illinois, became friends with Tom Mez. A nice jump for Max D's Neil Elliott, and that's how Neil sorting ended up in Monster Jam behind the wheel of Max D. He drove the second ever Maximum Destruction truck, and he has just been tearing it up ever since. He really has. You know, he's uh, the perfect fit for Maximum Destruction. You know, you have the perfect fit for Grave Diggers, but then you have the perfect fit for Maximum Destruction, and Neil, Neil Elliott is exactly what Maximum Destruction needs. He has made nine Monster Jam World Finals appearances again a guy that competes in the stadium championship series stateside and then comes over and does these international shows. He's been all over the globe and he is a guy that every single event usually ends up in first or second. Always up there in that podium, always finishing in the top three in each competition. So Neil Elliott doesn't make any lead become safe. So if you're barring Musauer and Zombie, you're watching this, you've got the lead. You can make history as the first ever freestyle winner in Tokyo and you got this guy on the track right now. Absolutely. Look at the Big Air he's getting, you know, he's getting the sky willies. He knows how to attack the track. He knows how to play the game when you have this type of uh, track and this type of element. He knows what faces to hit and when to hit them. And he keeps the throttle down and keeps the momentum going, just like right there. He keeps everything going. And the talk of the night has been about the dirt, the muddy dirt that just continues to just chunk and chunk and chunk away on this track. So the BKT tires trying to get traction and a nice jump there from Neil Elliott going a little sideways, cross threading. You have to do that to make something happen. With the traction you're not getting, you take these ramps straight, you're not going to get a whole lot of air. And we've seen that over and over again throughout the competition. Yeah, you got to make something out of nothing at this time, especially going last. All Everything's eroding away and the track is slippery. So you just got to make something out of nothing right now, Scott. Neil Elliott in Max D trying to give Bari Musauer in Zombie Fire a run for the championship here, a run for a freestyle win. Monster Jam consistently rewriting the record books, making history. So the winner of this event, you, you'll never be able to take that away from him. He will be the first ever winner of an event championship here in Tokyo. So Bari watching and waiting, trying to see what Neil Elliott will do. And he's going to stop short here. Yeah, I, I think it's what's going to hurt all these people. You can see the third place here is, is Bari got the backflip in. Yes, he didn't land it, but he got it in. And that's what the fans want to see. So Neil Elliott, Max D, third place, had some nice jumps. And cross threading a little bit, taking some of the smaller ramps straight. But at the end of the night, not quite enough. As Zombie Nation now is out with Bari Musauer in Zombie winning the freestyle competition. So he wins racing, wins freestyle, double down there. Eight more points going to Bari Musauer in Zombie. Let's go down to the track with Leslie and our freestyle winner. So Bari, you get it done tonight, taking home the first ever freestyle victory here in Tokyo. And it was really amazing that you ended that run with that backflip. Yeah, you know, we were the first one to attempt it, so when you normally do that, you get a good score, so I knew I had that in my, my arsenal there. It was great to come out here and represent for Zombie Nation. For some fans that have never seen it live before here in Tokyo, they were loud, they were proud, they were great, and I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. So exciting, but the biggest thing is we have to wait and add those eight points and, of course, the points from all the other competitors from Freestyle to see who's going to take that overall event championship. What a great night for Bari Musauer as we await the official announcement of the overall event champion. And there it is as he is letting the excitement show a tie at the top of the leaderboard, which means the freestyle score comes into play. And with a higher score, Bari Musauer and Zombie is your champion.
So here we are, Barry. You told me before the event started that you were all about bringing Zombie here for the first time to Japan and taking that overall event victory. So what does it mean to put that in with all of your other victories from your Monster Jam career? And that's just a feather on the cap, Leslie, because I don't get to do stadiums very often. I'm normally on the Triple Threat Series, which is an all-arena series, so I got to make these stadiums count. So coming over here to Tokyo to make history, I love it. These fans have been great. I can't wait to meet them tomorrow. And you know what? I love Monster Jam. This is a dream come true for me. I never thought I would be across the country, across the world, living my dream. But you know what? I love every minute of it. And we're having a blast. Now, when we started the show, you said the atmosphere was going to be electric. You were not lying. The fans here so excited and an incredible turnout here at the MetLife Dome. At the end of the night, standing on the track with the hardware, Zombie Nation's own Bari Musauer. He brought Zombie Nation to Tokyo tonight. That's what Bari does. He's a true veteran of the sport. He won racing, won freestyle, overall champion. But you know what I'm excited about? Taka. In front of his hometown crowd, yes, he started off a little slow, a little rough, but he shows he has a lot to offer for the sport. Not a bad way to start your Monster Jam career. Fourth place finish in freestyle in front of his hometown crowd. Go to MonsterJam.com for tickets, shows, any information. The Road to World Finals 21 in Orlando has already begun internationally. You can find us on social media at Monster Jam for Scott Buto and Leslie Mears. I'm Scott Jordan. Thanks for watching and good night from Tokyo, Japan.